G'day, today I'm going to be reviewing the Rigol DP832 Lab or Bench Power Supply. And there's a, there's a good side view of it, a look at the length. And straight away, just picking it up, there's, there's definitely a confidence-inspiring mass to it. It's a linear power supply, so it definitely has at least one uh, big fat toroidal transformer in there. So that's why you may be able to hear that the fan is already running. That fan comes on straight away when you power it on. Presumably its behavior changes as the temperature increases or decreases. Let's come in for a close up of the front panel. All right, I've got the power supply stood up on the bench to look at the front panel. And these rubber bumpers on the corners, the ones on the back are extra deep. So I can actually stand it up off the bench using a right angled IEC lead that's supplied. So that's quite a nice touch. If, you're, um, if you have to get this thing out and sit it down next to you on the ground in a tight space, that's not a bad feature to have. So let's take a look at the user interface. We have our three channels down the bottom. Now we have two isolated channels that run at a maximum of 30 volts and then another channel which is a maximum of 5 volts. So you can have your split rail supply and then another 5 volt supply. It's worth noting that the channel 2 and channel 3 share a common. So you only have two isolated supplies and one that has a common supply. Taking a look at the front panel, we have our graphic display here that shows our three channels. And setting the, setting the voltage and current parameters is super easy. You can, you can jump back and forth between digits. So you might see on channel, channel one is currently selected and I can move the cursor to kind of use this, this jog wheel to move the voltage up and down. And you can go down to a, a lower resolution there or a, a finer resolution there. You can you know, change the, the tens of millivolts. But my preferred method is to just set voltage by pressing this voltage key. So these keys along the bottom of the screen correspond to these menu options. I just like to hit the voltage key and then let's say 25 or 12.34 uh, volts. So I press 1, 2.34 and then volts up the top. And likewise to change the current limit, I can set the current limit to 123 uh, milliamps, let's say. I could just press 1, 2, 3 and then I have the option of pressing milliamps. Now of course you have the option of volt and amp units or milliamps and millivolt unit for those options. And moving between channels is just as easy as selecting the channel number. So I can I could do similar things to channel two. This time I'll use 12, uh, whoops, I need to go over the voltage, 12 volts and 100 milliamps, which could be 100 or I could do 0.1 amps. So you've got a couple of options there with how you can set the voltages and the current limits. And then for turning the channels on and off, you have independent channel control. So you can use the on off button. And now you can see there's a readout on channel one showing the voltage that's read back and also the current that's flowing. Now you'll notice there are no remote uh, voltage sensing terminals, not, not on the front or the back. And that's because this is a pretty low current power supply. It only does three amps per channel. If you were doing something closer to 10 amps per channel, you would definitely want that remote voltage sensing terminals. But because this is a low current power supply, it's only sensing the voltage straight at the output terminals. And of course, you can independently control each of the powers of the three power supplies using these on off buttons. I do like how there is an all off button, so you can very quickly just smash that all off button to remove power from all the channels. And likewise, there's a two step process all on, and then you hit OK, and that'll turn all supplies on. But no matter what, the, if, you, if you have any other configuration other than all uh, on, then if you have any of the channels on, this will turn all the channels off. And that's, that's a, a nice, you know, something's going wrong, you can smash the all off button just to save the day. Just a quick tour of the back panel. We have our voltage selection switches because of course this is a transformer supply, so it needs a selected input voltage. But of course you've got the options between 100, 115 and 230 volts for Australia. We have the optional RS-232 interface. So I think to use that, you do need to buy and install some software onto the power supply from Rigol. We have the GPIB digital IO, USB host, so you can uh, bring settings and probably some firmware in from a USB flash drive. 
and the USB device lead. So you can plug this into a computer for automation purposes. So it looks like the uh, optional Ethernet interface, the USB interface, and the serial interface are just three interfaces that can be used for automated test. Now, of course, because this is a isolated supply, there's the option for making what's called a split rail or split supply. That's where you can create, for instance, a positive voltage and a negative voltage if you're running audio amplifying circuits or, or other RF kind of stuff. But you can also uh, stack the supplies in series. So you could potentially have 30 plus 30 volts, which is 60 volts at three amps, 180 watts. That's, you can do a lot with 180 watts. Um, and of course, otherwise you could connect the supplies in parallel to give you a maximum of six amps at 30 volts. So let's have a look at the tracking controls. I'm just gonna go over to channel one. And this is where we just uh, use this right hand key to turn tracking on. So that brings us over to the tracking option. Then we press it again to turn tracking on. And you'll see this little link symbol has appeared to indicate that tracking is now on. So if I, ah, and in fact, the moment I turn that tracking on, the set voltage for both channels has been reflected. So channel two is now tracking to channel one. If I turn channel one on, we still have channel two remaining off. And if I turn channel two on, it jumps to the same voltage. Now in a split rail scenario, you often want both channels to behave in a, in a synchronized on off behavior. So we can quite easily change that by going to, I think it is utility and then system. And we go over across to track set. So you can see that track mode is currently synchronous. So that's synchronizing the voltages between supplies, but the on off sync is disabled. So we can, we can still, and I, and I can turn the power supplies on and off from here. We can still independently control the on off state of both power supplies. But if we hit that track set, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, track set, track on off. Okay, so now we've got our highlighted disable and I'm gonna hit that again and that goes to enable. So once we've done that, it's just for safety, turn both supplies off. But now if I turn one supply on, both supplies uh, reflect that behavior. So I can turn on and off both supplies at the same time. And that's super useful for when you have a split supply or a series and parallel supply. So you can see there's a lot of features on the power supply. And as such, it can be a little slow to set up each channel individually if you're moving between different kinds of tests. For instance, if you have a op amp circuit in a preamp and then a big power circuit in an audio amplifier and then maybe some digital logic at 5 volts or 3.3 volts, even 1.8, you have all of these common test or uh, measurement scenarios that you want to be able to quickly access. And it can be a bit tedious to manually enter voltage and current limits for each three channels. So we're going to explore the save and recall feature. So let's go back to that op amp and audio amp uh, example that I proposed. Let's say I've got an op amp circuit that takes, uh, I'll, turn, I'll leave tracking on, uh, that takes a split 12 volt supply. So I'll enter 12 volts for the voltage and that's going to be reflected across both channels. But let's say I've also got some digital stuff in there as well that runs at five volts. So I'll have five volts and the current should be limited to, let's say 150 milliamps and the current for both the voltage channels, cause was it an op amp circuit? That should probably be, yeah, let's say a hundred milliamps for both channels one and two. So we have a split 12 volt supply for positive negative 12 volts at hundred milliamps. And then I've got some five volt digital logic and that's quite a, quite a common setup, I guess. So let's, let's save that setup in our own user defined uh, presets so that we can quickly recall it. And we can do that using the store menu option. And you can see I've already got a, a few populated just as I was having a play around, but let's save this into state one and call it split. And that way we can always recall our 12 volt split supply with five volt logic whenever we want. So I can just hit uh, browser and that takes us across to the next side and I'm going to enter save. And uh, this is where we can name our file. So I'm gonna call it split or I'll just call it op amp actually. So OP 
How do I enter again? I forget. Oh, I have to hit select. O P A M P. And oh, I missed my A. Whoops. Now, usually on this kind of interface where you have the entire alphabet just laid out in front of you as a table and you might have to like manually increment around, that, that would usually be a huge pain. But with the jog wheel, it's really quite straightforward to move around. As you can see, you can, you can very quickly jog from one side of the alphabet to the other. So I'm just gonna call that op amp and hit okay. And yes, I do wanna override the existing file. So now I have my op amp file, which was 12, 12 and five and all at pretty low currents. But if I then wanted to move over to my big audio amplifier or, um, or RF amplifier circuit that takes a much higher current, but maybe the same voltage, that's quite easy as well. I can just hit this display button. That, that always takes us back to our metering display. And it's worth mentioning that you can also cycle through to an, a kind of cool analog display that only shows a single channel. But I much prefer this one because you get you know a one glance for all your channels. Anyway, that aside, uh, I, I want 12 volts at a much higher current. So I'm gonna run 12 volts and three amps. So again, I just hit, uh, I'm already, I've already selected current, so I can just hit three amps and go over to channel two and go to three amps. So now I have a, a current limit of three amps on both my 12 volt supplies and I'll leave the five volt supply as it is. Now, just like before, I can go to store. I'll come down to the next one and save over the top of that. And this one I'm gonna call uh, audio. So that was pretty, a pretty painless process for entering file names. Okay, so just to recap, I've made two custom kind of like user profile setups for the voltage and current limits. And now when I go to my display, we can see I'm still in my audio setup, which was 12 volts at three amps. But now I wanna go back over to my, let's say op amp preamplifier. So I can very quickly go to store and select my op amp from the menu and I'll read that out now. So once I've read that out, the power supplies turn off just as a safety. Obviously you don't want to make any mistakes and accidentally dump heaps of current into your very sensitive circuit. But you can see now I'm on 12 volts and I've got a much smaller current limit. So I can turn my supplies on. Just as a bit of an idiosyncrasy, that, um, that synchronous on off behavior is reset when you recall user settings. So I guess it's finally time for the review part of this video. Just to summarize all the, the user experience that we've had, I mean, the, the interface is nice. I like that with one hand, if you were sitting at a bench, you would have one hand accessing pretty much the entire voltage control side, the voltage and current setting side of things. And then just a bit of a reach over and you've got your on off control. So with, with the power supply, say up on a shelf, you can very easily control the whole thing with one hand, just registering your hand against the side of the case. The synchronous reset behavior, I feel like that's probably something that could be saved as a state in that user save and user recall function. I, I much, I'd much prefer not having to navigate back through to the, I think it's utility, utility, system, move across, track set, on off and then having to hit that. So that's that's quite a multi-step process and I, I would like for that to be included in the save and recall feature. I suppose that's only really a firmware issue though. So if Rigol release an updated firmware, that might be one of the things they look at fixing if there's enough user interest. The weight and size, it's definitely big and it's definitely heavy, but that's what you get with a linear supply. The fan runs straight away when you power it up and that's, that's a pretty minor point. I mean, a lot of test gear, a lot of bench equipment like oscilloscopes and power supplies have fans that run continuously. So that's that's kind of splitting hairs. Overall, super happy with the Rigol DP832 power supply. At first, the, uh, the radial button menu kind of took a bit of getting used to, but I can definitely see why Rigol have laid it out like that. You can access the, the jog wheel and the entire keypad just with one hand registered against the side of the supply. So you can have your, your hand on the supply over on one side of the bench and you know turning the knobs on the device under test on the other side and you can you know quickly access all the major voltage and current setting commands. 
just with your thumb basically. So that's, that's really neat. The display, really, really nice to look at. It, it's very clear what's going on. I like the visual feedback as you turn channels on and off and navigating the, uh, the units for the, for the uh, voltage and current was super easy as well. So I'd recommend this power supply for the serious maker or anyone who's doing any like amplifier work or design because if, if you are then you almost definitely need a split rail supply so you can generate positive and negative voltages. Uh, yeah, the serious maker or even a maker space just looking to get a great general purpose supply on the bench. And that concludes our power supply review. If you own one of these yourself and want to share your thoughts, we'd love to hear from you in the comments or in the forums. And even if you just have any further questions about the power supply, I'll catch you later.